Origin just wants to give you accent. This is Eggnog Riot at West Point, a military Christmas story by Channel the Fat Edition. <laughs> okay, this is a Christmas video, I'm guessing, because yeah, it's Christmas in a few days. Why didn't he, I don't think he has covered that Christmas truce from World War One, right? It's like one of the most famous Christmas war story. It feels like one of the things that Federation should cover. I guess next year or something he'll cover it. But yeah, this is something Agnog Riot. Why some kind of a war uh, area? There was some Agnog and somebody fight over it or something. I can see that. Why not? In war times, uh, even the simplest things can be a commodity. Who knows? But it's gonna be interesting. This is the latest video from Federation. Uh, was posted a day ago or something. A day or two ago. Yeah. So, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's watch it. Remember, we'll flag my Ericsson. Don't forget to subscribe. So, I know which type of videos to react to more. And you can help this channel by helping the algorithm. That way, I guess. Yeah, the more, I don't know, it's called traffic. Comment, like, it's called traffic or something. That like increases the impression or something. I don't know. It's all YouTube terms. I don't know. But yeah. I'm Instagram now. If you wanna follow me, link in the description. And yeah, let's watch this one. Before Christmas, and all the cadets at West Point got hammered, destroyed their barracks, and tried to kill several of their instructors. Makes sense. <laughs> Today we're talking about one of the greatest military Christmas stories of all time, the West Point Eggnog Riot of 1826. But first a word from our sponsor, 18. this video is brought to you by the greatest sporting goods store retail location on the planet, Shields. And if you don't live near one, they have an even better online store that's got satisfaction guaranteed 18, and 26, price matching, that's insane. so make sure to go check them out. And then of course we have one of our newer sponsors, Permasafe. They are industrial strength disposable gloves, you can put like a gallon of water inside these things, they still won't break. That's quality jiggling right there. If you actually work with your hands, you need some perma-safe rubber gloves, okay? You're just trying to get 40 hours on your paycheck. You're not trying to go home and give your wife a UTI. Keep your hands clean with perma-safe disposable gloves. Now, you're gonna feel some pressure. I mean, back to the video. All right, important background info. West Point, the prestigious military academy, was created in 1802, and from 1802 to 1817, it was a complete shit show. It had a terrible reputation for being complete and utter chaos pretty much all of the time. Cadets were allowed to come and go as they pleased, and then when they did show up, they were too preoccupied drinking or dueling one another to actually learn how to become effective military. So anti-military, right? You can come and go as you please. That's not what you think of military. The discipline is one of the top things. Discipline and, I guess, uh scheduling i don't know how to say that basically that like you have to be here you have to live in the whatever that's like barracks or i don't know what do you have at a, a, a academy call you know whatever they the rooms or whatever i don't know i can't think i can't remember the word apparently uh, even though i'm building one right now what is it called here ah fucking hell hostel hostel yeah why not hostel yeah so something like that and yeah, that's what you think of military when you think of today, right? Like, you know, one bathroom at the floor, depending on where the place is. It's like, it feels like you're in college or something sometimes, but much stronger, most, most, much disciplined, I'm guessing. But yeah, at this time, they can just come and go. Like, it's like, a, just, yeah, like somebody walk into a shop or something. Yeah, it's going to be fucked up. Officers. Cue this man, Colonel Slyvanus Thayer. He's going to be hired as superintendent in 1817, and he's going to turn this ship around. He's going to come up with all kinds of radical rules, and because of this, he is regarded as the father of West Point. And when I say radical rules, it was basically just him pointing out obvious shit that we shouldn't be allowed to do anymore, like get drunk all day, <laughs> kill each other in duels, and you actually have to show up to class. The hardest of these rules... Radical. Oh, Pikachu face. You saying we shouldn't do that? Yeah, yeah. I think that this is some of the obvious shit, yeah. To enforce was a no drinking because there was three places to buy alcohol in very close proximity to West Point. They had North Tavern, which was pretty no much No beer, come Point. on. Then you had this little general store type deal ran by a guy by the name of Benny Haven and his wife Lileda. And then right across the Hudson, you had Martin's Tavern. So Thayer and his war on alcohol buys the building that North Tavern is in, kicks them out and turns it into a hospital. Then he instructs Benny Haven and his wife to no longer sell alcohol to any of the cadets. The only tavern left after that is Martin's Tavern, but that's across the Hudson river so he just leaves a guard on sentry duty at the dock where the boats are 24 7 to keep any cadets from going over to that tavern that's it the alcohol problem is solved or so they thought you see because benny haven over here is one of the boys he was a veteran of the war of 1812 so he keeps selling alcohol under the table hush hush to all the cadets this goes on for a couple years and then thayer finally catches benny and his wife selling alcohol kicks them off the west point campus and the rumor is they are the only two people to ever receive a lifetime ban from the military academy now at this point benny and his wife have what? essentially lost their job and wait a minute so nobody's ever gotten banned for life i mean technically they have to like push people to get in why would the ban like that so yeah it kind of makes sense right military is one thing once you're in you can't go back 
Otherwise, what is it called? Like defecting, whatever, right? You actually go to jail, right? Nowadays, what is it, that new thing, right? People are you know, creating this kind of like social media post with some kind of some, you know, some Instagram model type, uh, you know, people who's like wearing military uniforms, saying like, oh, they are in the uni- they are in the military, so people actually join in, but that's not the case. Something, some shit like that's happening, right? Into their home, pretty much anybody would be begging for forgiveness and promising not to do it again. But Benny and his wife Laleda are the number one supporting characters in this story because they decide that they're going to buy a fishing shack right on the Hudson River, right outside of West Point, where all the cadets could get to them. Benny's new tavern, though, is only accessible from two different routes. You have to either get there by a boat on the Hudson River or you have to crawl down a 60 foot steep cliffside that has stone stairs carved into it, meaning that it is treacherous for pretty much anybody, especially especially if you're drunk. And whether Benny intended it to be this way or not, this actually discourages pretty much anybody except for a bunch of cadets that are trying to avoid from being caught from drinking at his tavern. So his tavern is essentially just West Point cadets all the time. The only problem with that is that the West Point cadets don't actually make any money, so Benny decides he's gonna give everybody a year-long tab and he's willing to let them pay off their tab in barter. And the only thing he's not willing to accept is West Point military uniforms. He accepts everything else, including their shoes. Okay, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that a grizzled veteran from the War of 1812 has opened up a bar right outside of West Point and all the cadets can go there, get drunk and pay for it with shit that they've stolen. I mean, strategically transferred to his location. So obviously all the cadets love this guy. He's probably the most Okay, uh, why? I don't understand. Why, why is he doing this? Is he trying to stick to the people who banned him or something? Because you're banned. Okay, you want to sell booze, you're going to sell it to anybody. Or is it like do, doing the, for the boys or something? Because w- w- isn't this an issue? If they, if they find out, wouldn't they put him in jail actually to endanger all these people or some shit like that? I don't know. They will find some way influential bartender in American history, any big military name from that era that went through West Point was friends with Benny Haven. Ulysses S. Grant, homeboys. Even Edgar Allan Poe is quoted as saying that Benny was the only congenial soul in that godforsaken place. (laughs) That's the deal. That's where everybody goes to drink and get their alcohol. It's from Benny Haven's tavern, except for the two times a year where the cadets are actually allowed to drink on campus, and that is 4th of July and Christmas. Fast forward, 4th of July, 1826, all the cadets are drinking on campus openly because they're allowed to because it's 4th of July, and they get absolutely hammered at which point they decided that they were going to perform a snake dance i have no idea what that is but apparently at the end of it they ran over picked up the commodore of west point major william worth carried him off to the barracks because they liked the guy so much they wanted to kidnap him so they could go drink with him because of this superintendent thayer decides that they went too far and that there's just going to be no more drinking ever again at west point fast forward later that year december 22nd 1826 it's almost christmas and for the first time since west point's inception the cadets are not going to be allowed to throw a Christmas party on Christmas Eve and have everybody get hammered on eggnog. So obviously they're going to do it anyways and just try not to get caught. But I mean, worst case scenario, they do get caught. What's really going to happen? You'll be shot for this? No, I don't think so. More like chewed out. I've been chewed out before. Some of the cadets sneak off and they go across <laughs> this the to Martin's Tavern where they can get a better deal on buying a bunch of alcohol and their goal is to get at least half a gallon of whiskey for the eggnog. That being said, anything worth doing is worth overdoing, so naturally they end up with two gallons of whiskey and they get caught by the guard on the way back, a private by the name of James Dugan, and they end up bribing him with 35 cents to look the other way. Next day, December 23rd, all the cadets are still stealing food and anything else they could want for this party. While that's going on, the staff have their Christmas party at Thayer's house. It's at this Christmas party that Thayer decides that he's going to be a pretty cool guy. He knows that the cadets are going to drink tomorrow, but he's just going to turn a blind eye. He's not going to increase the amount of guards or the amount of staff on duty. He's just going to look the other way. He's going to have the same old two officers on staff making sure everything's okay. He knows they're going to drink. They can drink. Let them think they got away with it. It'll be fine. So that gets Mm. decided. The next order of business is to figure out what they're going to do with the class fuck up Jefferson Davis. Yeah, like as in the president of the Confederacy in the future at this point. Apparently he has quite the drinking problem and he's not very slick about it because he has the distinct honor of being the first student to ever be arrested for going to Benny's Tavern. And he just got back from being hospitalized for four months because the second time he got caught at Benny's Tavern, he tried to make a getaway and ended up falling down the 60 foot cliff on the stone stairs to get there. And he's been hospitalized ever since You're kidding. and he just got back to class. Fast forward again, December Oh, this is so awesome. Jefferson Ulysses S. Grant. All these historical figures around this time doing... 
playing with a high school type of movie, right? There's a movie or some TV show spin-off. There's a boys TV show uh, spin-off, right? Gen V or something. Basically, that school campus shenanigan type of uh, movie. <laughs> it's, it's basically that shit, right? Imagine going there, Ulysses S. Grant and everybody's walking around all these like historical people just doing all these bulls and sneaking around bullshit. <laughs> This is so good. Man, that guy, you know, that guy who opened the bar. Man, imagine him, right? Imagine if he was alive right now or whatever later, realizing all those kind of big-ass figures were just, like, going there at that pub, right? Drinking and shit. Is the pub still around? It's a very historical point, isn't it? December 24th, Christmas Eve, day of the party. During the day, all the cadets are going out. They're buying all the fresh eggs, all the fresh milk from the local farmers. Some of them go over to Benny's Tavern. They end up buying uh, an extra Is that gallon of moonshine Pop in tavern. case the two gallons of whiskey aren't enough. And Benny's wife, Lolita, also makes them a bunch of mutton, which they're going to take back to the barracks and heat in the middle of the night as a drinking snack while they're getting drunk on eggnog. Eggnog and mutton, which is disgusting to think about. All right, fast forward a couple hours. Everybody's been released for the day. They're all hanging out at the barracks. It's nighttime. It's time to get this party started. They break out the wooden buckets. They start mixing the eggs and the milk and the booze to make their eggnog. The two officers that are in charge of everybody, Captain Ethan Hitchcock and Lieutenant William Thornton are going to bed at like 11 midnight. That's when the party's really going to start. And that's pretty much exactly what happens. Hitchcock and Thornton go to bed and then everybody else just kind of starts drinking quietly in their barracks rooms amongst themselves, hanging out in the hall, having a good time. And that Naturally, as the night goes on, things get a little bit louder and a little bit louder as everybody gets drunker and drunker. And finally, at 4 a.m., Captain Hitchcock is awoken by a bunch of noise. So Captain Hitchcock gets up out of bed. He's going to go investigate, but he knows exactly what he's going to find. This dude's been in the army his whole life. He knows it's just a bunch of cadets drinking on Christmas Eve. It's not really that big of a deal. All he's going to do is he's going to go find the first group he can, tell them to be quiet. They're going to tell everybody else and everything's going to be completely fine. So that's mm. exactly what he does. He goes upstairs to the first of many barracks rooms. It has a bunch of cadets drinking inside of it, pokes his head in the door and is like, hey, shut the fuck up and go to bed. And they're like, cool, our bad. And he leaves. He goes back to his room. And that should have been the end of the entire thing. So Captain Hitchcock is laying in bed. Sure enough, somebody starts banging on his door. So he pops up, goes to check the door. There's nobody there. Looks down the hallway. Nobody there. That was weird. Whatever. I'm going to go back to bed. Lays back down. Five minutes later, somebody bangs on his door again. Goes over, checks the door. Nobody's there. Looks down the hallway. Nobody's there again. Shuts the door, stomps on the ground like he's going to lay back down in bed and waits there for like 30 seconds. Somebody bangs on the door again. He opens the door and all he catches is the ass end of a bunch of cadets yelling tally ho hitch. Okay, now it's on. He was trying to be cool. You guys are being drunk assholes. Now there's going to be consequences. <laughs> so he goes upstairs. He starts. <laughs> This, okay, first of all, I love how he tells the story, right? First, he talked about tavern. I even forgot what the title of the story is. And then he talked about like how there's only two nights you can drink. And he ends up Christmas. Like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. This is a Christmas story. <laughs> and all this like, oh, it's going to be just average day, right? I'm going to tell them to calm down. They'll probably calm down somewhat. It's going to be fine. And after a few moments, <laughs> do music places or something. Yeah. <laughs> it, he's, he's treating this as some kind of like college dorm. In the end, this is a military uh, thing, right? Military camp. It's completely different. People are completely different. They are getting trained to do something completely different. It's kicking in doors, chewing people out, writing down people's names. He gets to one room. Two of the cadets try to hide underneath a blanket, and another guy tries to take his hat and cover up his face so he can't write his name down. The dude's under the blanket. He's like, take the blanket off. Quit fucking around. Whatever. They take the blanket off. He sees who they are. Okay, cool. Dude with the hat won't take the hat off of his face. He tries to walk past him. He ends up pushing him back into the room. And he's like, no, take the hat off your face so I can see who you are. And the dude doesn't do it. So he's like, take the hat off or I'm going to take the hat off for you. And then he rips the hat out of the dude's hands sees who it is, writes down his name, no big deal, goes over to the next room. Now, the logical thing to do here would be to go to bed and deal with your punishment in the morning. However, since they're drunk assholes at this point in time, they decide that since Hitchcock actually touched one of them, that it was an attack on their honor and they needed to retaliate. So they went and got bayonets and knives and pistols and they were going to hunt Hitchcock down and kill him. Cut back to Hitchcock. What? He's making his way through the barracks. There's drunk cadets laying down. What? <laughs> that took a dark turn. Okay, we're gonna mess with him. Okay, we're gonna beat the shit out of you and then like, okay, come on, that's like, doesn't, doesn't track, right? We're gonna kill him. Okay. 
in the hallway. It's a complete shit show. He makes his way into one of the bigger rooms. It has like 20 cadets inside of it, at which point he explains to them that because there's more than 12 of them, this technically constitutes as a riot and starts reading them the riot act before informing them that they're all under arrest. Then after placing all of them under arrest, he tells the cadet in charge of this like area or this room that he needs to open up all the foot lockers so he can find all the booze and get rid of it. And that cadet is like, no thanks, and he goes and lays down on the floor and falls asleep. At this point, fucking Jefferson Davis, the future president of the Confederacy, runs in, slams the door behind him, holding the door while looking at it, and is like, guys, hide the grog, Hitchcock's coming. And then he turns around and Hitchcock's right there, and he's like, oh, damn. At this point, Captain Hitchcock looks at Jefferson Davis and is like, take your dumb ass to bed. And he's like, okay, and then he goes to bed, falls asleep, that's the rest of the story for him. Yeah, Captain Hitchcock literally just told the future president of the Confederacy that it's past his bedtime and he listened. This man is the biggest gangster in the entire story. Captain Hitchcock then turns around to the 20 cadets that he was just chewing out, looks at them. Okay, so I don't understand this. He's a captain, he's, he's let's just say if, if this were like a school or something, cadets would be students and captain would be like a teacher or something, right? Let's understand it that from that point of view. How did those cadets just basically like, okay, this is attack on our honor, we're gonna kill him type of way? He's a captain, right? He's he's the one teaching you shit in this like uh, you know camp or whatever campus, whatever that is, right? Military campus. How did they just went to we're gonna kill him? I guess it's like 1812 or something, right? 1812. So the, the, those kind of things, right? It was attack on my, I challenge you for duel, sir. That kind of shit was still going on. So maybe it's something like that, I don't know. Um, they look at him, he looks at them, he looks at the guy that fell asleep on the floor, not respecting his authority, and he's like, I have no idea what to fucking do right now. So he just turns around and he leaves, he walks away. And while all this is going on, outside the barracks, there's an active duty private that's on sentry duty over the night, and he's got a drum with him to alert everybody in case like there's a fire or somebody attacks, or he just needs everybody to wake up. He has this emergency drum. And a bunch of drunk cadets come up to this poor private and are like, hey, give me your fucking drum set. So they steal this private's drum set, and just start playing it. This ends up waking up the other officer, Lieutenant Thornton, who goes to investigate what's going on. Apparently at this point, the eggnog riot, mutiny, rebellion, whatever you want to call it, it's really kicked off and the idea is spread that we're going to kill some of the West Point staff because Thornton is immediately stopped by a student that has a fucking sword. To which Lieutenant Thornton is like, what the fuck are you doing? Put the goddamn sword down. And the drunk cadet like grumbles something, throws the sword on the ground and then falls asleep on the floor. Cut back to Captain Hitchcock, who has an angry mob of students hunting him and he has no idea. He's come <laughs> up on another room of cadets that have barricaded themselves into their room and he's trying to kick the door down. And he finally kicks the door in and one of the cadets- Open this, God damn it! I didn't join military for this. <laughs> this is the most insane shit ever, God. Why, why is somebody not making a movie out of this? This is way too insane. I love this. Cadets <laughs> pulls a pistol and fires, and at the last second, one of the other cadets hits the pistol up, and the bullet hits the door frame right next to Hitchcock. And Hitchcock is like, holy shit. Okay, things are getting out of hand. It's time to go get help. Cut back to Lieutenant Thornton, who just got done dealing with the cadet with the sword, and then he hears a gunshot, and he's like, what? the fuck is happening right now. So he goes to investigate that, and on his way there, one of the cadets hits him in the head with a piece of firewood and knocks him unconscious. So Hitchcock makes his way out of the barracks. He's going to find help. He runs into Private James Overton because he was looking for him, and James Overton is like, hey, your cadets stole my drum set. What the fuck? To which Hitchcock is like, yeah, well, they just tried to kill me, so obviously things are out of control. Why don't you go get the comm? Now, when he said go get the comm, he meant Commodore William Worth. However, the cadets that were off to the side overheard him, and they thought he said the bomb, and they took that as he was referring to the bombardiers, which if you don't know, West Point wasn't just a college at this point. It was also an active military base, and on that base was a bunch of bombardiers or artillerymen. And the cadets and the artillerymen absolutely fucking hated each other and had this huge rivalry and in the cadets' drunken stupor, they took that to mean that the artillery... So cadets were basically students at this point. Somehow as a rivalry with active soldiers who were like bombardiers, artillerymen. How does, how does two even work? It's like some, uh, you know, like some students having rivalry with like a campus, like, uh, you know, what do you call it, right? Uh, teachers, right? Group of teachers, whatever. It's like having rival... They, they are not the same, even in position or anything. How do you rivalry with that? It doesn't make sense. All this shit is insane, man. <laughs> Damn. So, seriously, like, imagine being captain and all this, like, position. You've seen war and shit at this point if you're at that position, right? Some students are fucking with you at this point. 
And then we're going to show up and start like shelling the barracks or at least like try to attack them somehow. So they spread the word and all the drunk cadets start fortifying their barracks for an attack. They're putting all the furniture in front of doors. They're breaking out all the windows. They're loading whatever guns they have. I get it that they're drunk, but seriously, you're not, they're not going to attack you. They're trying to teach you. Like, why would your own captain, I, I get it, like, maybe it's like, okay, the, they realized, like, you know, maybe he, the captain realized that they're trying to kill him or something, right? Like, there were some guys who were trying to kill him because they att he attacked their honor or something. <laughs> How drunk are they? It's like, they're drunk at a whole other level, I'm guessing. They're getting ready for an actual fight. It is at this point that Captain Hitchcock hears the bugle playing, meaning that it's time for everybody to wake up, or so he thought, because he turns around and realizes that a bunch of drunk cadets had stolen the bugle and were playing it too. He then just kind of stands there for the next couple hours watching all the cadets fortify the building for an attack that's never coming as they break out windows, ruin a bunch of furniture, and then eventually they all get quiet and pass out drunk, waiting for this attack to come that never actually comes. So then the real bugle does actually kick off and all the other people start showing up. There's a couple of barracks that weren't actually involved. All those cadets start showing up. The rest of the staff, superintendent there, and everybody is like, what? the fuck happened there's broken glass everywhere there's mutton vomit all over the place there's drunk privates out in the field with a drum set like what is happening so then captain hitchcock goes over talks to thayer explains everything that happened and he's like what do you want me to do and thayer the dude that knows everything like total hard ass he's like totally in charge even he's like I have no idea so they just kind of go about their day like nothing happened and it's like the most of the cadets it's like if everybody does all this shit, who are you going to punish? All of them? And how are you going to punish? I don't know. I would just like, this is military, so I would just like do some kind of a major punishment, even if it's everybody. Like, you have to show something like that. I don't know. But then again, around this time, it's like, I don't know. I don't know what the situation would be, right? Maybe they didn't thought that they have enough uh, people to enforce something like this, because what if they like re revolt again or some shit? I don't know. Or they just like, ah, they were drunk. Let it go. Doesn't matter what. Maybe it's that the case. And slowly over time, they kind of figure out, okay, well, we have to do something. So they launch a little internal investigation. They figure out that there's like 90 cadets involved in this riot. And 90 is like roughly a third of all of West Point. So obviously they're not going to be able to kick out everybody. So they decide they're just going to take like the top 20 worst offenders and they're going to expel them. And like all but two of them were invited back the next year. So basically it was just a for show punishment. Some of the more notable names of people that were expelled include Hugh Mercer, who ended up being a general for the confederacy in the civil war then you had samuel roberts who ended up being the secretary of state for the republic of texas you've got benjamin humphreys who was expelled who ended up being also a confederate general and the governor of mississippi uh, jefferson davis famously didn't get a punishment at all and then you had uh john i mean technically just like ah oh, he's coming oh fuck he's already here and just went to sleep so why would he get punished Campbell, who they tried to expel, but he argued his way out of it, and he went on to sit as a Supreme Court justice later in life. Which, I mean, Makes. you have to admit, between a bunch of future... Look, man, if you have skill to basically explain your way out, it's feel like you should be somewhere in the law, basically super... And everybody's just going at the highest positions, all of them are general or something, might as well be Supreme Court, why not? It's like class of 12 or so, 18, 12, everybody just went to some high position. Confederate leaders getting in trouble for a grog mutiny and a future Supreme Court justice arguing his way out of his punishment. It's some of the best examples of foreshadowing I've ever seen in my entire life. In conclusion, yes. the moral of the story <laughs> is that if you're going to do the wrong thing, do it with a lot of your buddies because they can't yeah. get all of you in trouble at the same time. And because not today. Work makes the dream work, even if the dream is to be an. Yeah, not today, especially even if in America, right? Like, because of, like lots of rules and federal government has become at that level. Like even if you're a lot of it, like majority of it they are still going to find a way to punish you at that scale, right? That's back then it would have been fine. Not today. Asshole on Christmas Eve. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Happy Christmas, Merry, whatever the fuck you celebrate. Quack, bang, out. I'm going to go drink some eggnog. Anything else? And Laleda even makes them a bunch of... I keep wanting to say fucking hummus. It's not hummus. It's what the fuck is it called? Damn it. Mutton. <laughs> fucking mutton. Why, why am I getting mutton and hummus in my fucking head? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, this was the most insane story ever, especially with the high ranking people, right? This was like one of those high school spin off type of movies and shit. <laughs>
everybody's talking about like there's a cool guy there's a nerd guy apparently there's no nerd because it's like a military thing right some shit happens everybody just gets fucked up or something <laughs> Greece style of shit where everybody just like basically starts to dance or something there you go all the friends and crap. All right. What about those eggnog riot at West Point? A military Christmas story. What about West Point? Is right like more, more respect or something like he said in the start of the video? And what about that tavern? It's still around? I hope they preserved it or something because that would be awesome. Right? If you like my next one, subscribe. And yeah, check out other favorite reactions I did. There's a playlist here. And I'll see you next time.